Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Damian, as uh, Blare announced me. Uh, just a bit, little bit short of bio of myself. Um, I'm a DevOps by day. And actually, I do use uh, JavaScript and TypeScript a lot on my day-to-day -day work, but because I don't want to speak about work, <laughs> especially on a Sunday. Uh, I'm going to actually talk about another topic that's uh, front-end, and that's a toolkit called Svelte. Uh, but before that, yeah, I'm one of the uh, founders of the Hack Club, of the hackerspace Kika in Skopje, one of the founders of the Free Software Macedonia movement. Um, and yeah, tomorrow we are organizing also here a, a thing that's called NSND, or in which comes from the server creation or domaci jazik ništa se neće desit, dogoditi, or nothing will happen. So it's kind of an anti-conference. I I, I will invite you all to come tomorrow, but it's not like this thing, like with speakers and presentation stuff. It's more like we get around and we say, okay, let's do something, and then maybe we vote if there's too much ideas or stuff like that. Or if not, then 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 it's gonna be a di di dictatorship. Um, if you if you if you need to find me on the internet, my nickname is G Damian or G Damian, and I'm G Damian on GitHub, on Twitter, on Facebook, and I don't know what else on on, on RC. Um, and that brings me to to the, my next topic. Um, a couple of years ago, so like most of the hackers in the world are communicating on over RC, is the oldest chat protocol in the world and it's pretty pretty simple and doesn't have like I don't know stickers and stuff like that anyway <laughs> uh, uh, like I don't I don't know like 15 years ago I think I started writing um, a bot that sits on the IRC channel and then logs it everything logs everything in a database um, and actually I started uh, writing that just to learn this programming language called Erlang, but we were not we are not going to talk about it today. Um, anyway, that was the that was the bot, and uh, I also decided to store the to use the database called CouchDB, which is another topic. <laughs> but because I also wanted to learn that, the interesting thing about uh, CouchDB is that it's a database. It can it can store data, of course. It stores documents uh, formatted in JSON. The interesting thing is that you can actually access it over HTTP. So if you have front end, you can actually just use fetch API and uh, directly get data from, from the database. And once you had this uh, bot uh, logging all the IRC channels into the CouchDB, I said, okay, why don't I, why don't I write some front end the, the, so you can see the so you can like uh, follow the follow the the chats online like in a web browser. Uh, and actually, maybe I can quickly just click on this link and uh, and probably. <laughs> um, I don't. Yeah. Do you have internet? Actually? <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, here it is. Let me actually do a refresh. So it's actually, this is all static front end and you can click on channel and blah, blah, it brings you to the last message. And if if somebody writes something, will you have anybody? No, okay. Uh, it will actually dynamically show here. Anyway, that's, uh, that's not actually the topic. <laughs> So I started to, to started to decided to write this front end, uh, and started to look for look for uh, like uh, libraries, front, frameworks, etc. How to write the front end? And uh, first I wrote it in jQuery, like HTML, jQuery stuff like that. That was all. Like well, I, it worked kind of. It had all the possible bugs in the world. Like you click twice on a button and you don't know what happens. Like you get twice the history or something. All the stupid uh, ideas. Uh, then I tried React or, or and Angular, kind of there, they were too complicated for me and I kind of quickly decided not to do it in that way. And then I started learning Elm. Who, who here knows what Elm is? Okay, it's awful. <laughs> no, actually it's pretty great, 
but it's like not on the level that needs, it needs to be, and the, the development of Elm is kind of stuck in, like in, but I don't, I don't think they have anything new in like four years or something. Anyway, fast forward. I actually did write it in Svelte a couple of years ago, and this is, this was the introduction to, <laughs> to why, why are we here actually. So just quickly, what is Svelte? So Svelte is like a framework for for, for front end, right? It's uh, maybe similar to React, or maybe even more similar to Solid, I think. But yeah, let's uh, let's keep on the more more uh, known frameworks. The idea is what the idea is to write some components that yeah, you can then compose together in a full web application. So the components need to be encapsulated; they need to be reusable; they need to be composable. Blah blah. blah. Isolated. Uh, yeah, the idea is that if you add or remove one component on the on the site, uh, on the on the on the application on the web page, it doesn't change the behavior of the of the rest of the whole component. So that's one of the ideas of all actually of all frameworks. But uh, yeah, just uh, and one more note. Okay, let me see. Yeah, one more note. I'm not talking about Svelte Kit. So there's Svelte and there's Svelte Kit, and there are different projects and um, the, by the same authors. Svelte Kit is a bit more uh, a richer framework, which also includes kind of this uh, idea of uh, what's the name of that? Like a front end backend or backend front end? <laughs> I don't know how it's called. So, yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, probably most popular is uh, Next.js, right? Who have who have heard about Next.js? Okay, cool. Okay, so Svelte Kit is something like Next.js. It's pretty nice. I like it, but I don't always need it actually because I, I, I'm not even a front-end uh, programmer. So yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm not going to talk about Svelte Kit, but we, we, if we have time, maybe we can just see how it looks. Okay, so let's actually see how Svelte looks and. I'll have to, I'll, I'll try to like live code a bit. Uh, but just quickly, uh, I'm gonna show you this if you want to type it in the, at the same time. <laughs> no, no, it has their laptops open, okay. Um, this is how you scaffold a project uh, with Svelte. It's pretty, I guess, common. And in the end, you get this kind of, uh, This structure, it's not, it's not that big actually. Like you have this common files of any project, TypeScript project, uh, or JavaScript project. And then these are, these are the source files. And, um, yeah, let's actually try this. Cracks fingers. Um, okay, let's minimize this thing here. So what did I say? But, yeah. So who knows what Vit is? Vite. Okay, so Vit is one of the bundlers for JavaScript or it's kind of a, uh, yes. Which? Yeah, 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 yeah. It actually, it comes from the view project. Yeah, from this other framework that I forgot to mention. Um, and actually, I like it. It's pretty good. Like, it's uh, what, what's used in Iraq these days? Is it uh, still uh, Webpack? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I should have. Yeah, twelve seconds. It's okay. Uh, and where is this going to open? Okay, we have the we have the demo. Um, it's a really simple demo. It has some counter here. You can click on it, and that's it. Actually, let let me. 
let me show you how the code looks. And uh, do, 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 do. Do, do. Do, do. Now this this is a pretty low resolution, but it's okay. Um, okay, let's. Uh, I, show, I already showed you the, the the structure of a project. Everything that we are concerned about is in this SRC directory. I guess that's like common, right? And okay, what's what is Svelte again? Svelte is a framework where you write components, and then you then you uh, merge all the components into one application. And how does a component look? Well, it looks very familiar if you, this is, this is the main component. It looks very familiar if you, if you know HTML. Uh, it has the script tag, it has like HTML, and it has CSS. And this looks like normal HTML page, but it's actually a component. And, uh, how do we combine components? Well, we have another component here. It's called counter, and it does something. It's not important. It still has the script and uh, some button. How do we combine them? Well, I s just use the component as a normal HTML tag, and that's it. That's the magic of self. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so let's, um, let's go back to the to the page. So you can see here there's a button and the button says count something. Let's uh, let's change something. Hmm, change what? Or let's write a new component actually. That that might be more, more interesting. Let's say, okay, I have a hello. Um, okay, let's script. Script. And uh, I'm gonna say div and um, I'm gonna close the, uh, and I'm gonna say hi name. And I'm looking in the wrong thing here. Uh, okay, that's it. Okay, where does this name come from? Well, Let's make it a variable. Let name, I think. And okay, let's now save this file and I'm gonna save it as, uh, where did the save dialog go? We're gonna say this is gonna be hello.svelte. So what is a component? The component is a file with the svelte. Uh, Okay, extern. It's not extern. What is export? Why don't you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna ignore these errors for now. Uh, yeah. Sure. You mentioned the import type system. Just a curious about that. So that would enforce you to do the. No, no. So, as, as I said, you can use a component like this. But we actually did something here. We want something to happen. What, what is, what's that? We want to specify the name and it's very simple. You just say, hi, BRGS, I guess. Uh, now the famous last words. Does this work actually? I have no idea. Where is the browser? And maybe it will work if I actually serve start the server, right? <laughs> yeah, it works. Sorry, what? Yeah, yeah. You mean this one? Yeah, so example, I think about Angular or 
I don't know. I am. I don't know how Angular looks that much. So, <laughs> but uh, you see here when I actually typed this, uh, VS Code automatically imported uh, hello from hello cell. Actually, uh, here is normal um, JavaScript import, so I can actually rename the component. Hello X. Or maybe, uh, no, the, this problem does not work like this, right? Okay, maybe I'm lying. Uh, there, pro there is a way to how to, to rename this, but I don't, I don't remember. Maybe, yeah. Uh, did you ask about TypeScript, right? Yeah. So if I want to type, to, to write TypeScript, and that's actually recommended, I just need to add, to say here in the script, the language is TS. So now and now it's going to actually error out, yeah. And now here, it also knows that it's a string, so that also, also works. Uh, for example, I will probably not be able to put this, so, uh, I don't know. I don't know, how, no, this is queer, cursed to to a strings too, yeah. Oops. Okay. <laughs> I need a bigger keyboard here. Um, let, let's see that this actually works. Yeah, okay, it works. <laughs> By the way, because now I'm the dev, um, in this, uh, dev, uh, with dev server, actually, as I type here, let me try this. Uh, Huh. Okay, the screen is too small to... I think that if I change something here, like actually hello... Yeah, okay, this works. Uh, it's expected to work, but just, just so you know. Okay. Uh, what's next? Let me, let me check my... Yeah. So that was the basic... Uh, components in a Svelte, uh, Svelte application. There's some more files there, actually, uh, like, I don't know, uh, but we, we can just ignore them for now. Of course, there's some like setup files like this uh, main.ts file, which uh, actually loads the, like the main component and then everything is in, inside of that component. And uh, there's some, there's some index HTML, which actually has some div ID. Uh, div with the ID up and loads main TS and that loads the application and then puts the application into the div with the up ID. This is, this is just boilerplate that you almost never touch, like it's always the same. When you actually build all of this thing, these things will be replaced with uh, JavaScript, of course, you can't use TypeScript in the browser. Let's maybe, 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 maybe try that. that uh, to, 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 to. Uh, English is a bit hard. No, I'm joking. Uh, once you build the whole thing, you're actually getting this uh, compiled index HTML file and compiled JavaScript file, which actually includes all the JavaScript from all the components and includes all the, the CSS from all the components. Uh, let's actually check, yeah, some question, no? Um, let's actually see what happens if I actually add some CSS, when I'm illiterate uh, style. Okay. <laughs> let's uh, say uh, I want this div to be, uh, border, no, background, color pink. Is there pink? Yeah, cool. Now, there's something very interesting and strange happening here. I just write, wrote the, the div, the, the style, the CSS, without specifying which div I want to, to target. And although there's a lot of other divs here, that CSS only affected 
affected the div that's in the same component. So this is uh, how it's easy. It's, it looks like normal HTML. That's that's how you would write an HTML page. But actually, this is like uh, encapsulated in this and isolated in this component. So the JavaScript works only for this component. Uh, the CSS works just for this component. Uh, If you want, yeah, yeah, there, there's options and actually there are tricks. I can actually say here, um, <laughs> something global. Uh, maybe it was div global. I don't, I don't remember. There was some, um, there was some uh, modifier here that you can specify for if you want global CSS, global rules. And I actually, was it like this? Oh no, it's like this. Okay. Uh, well, actually, I don't have other diffs here. Maybe I lied previously. Yeah, it's only one diff. Okay. Uh, I have a P. Maybe I, I should have tried with P. Let's see what happens with the, oops, P. VS Code is annoying sometimes. This is actually interesting. Now that I changed the, the div to, to, to P, it now says, okay, you have um, a rule that does not apply. Okay, so actually this is not the correct way. I don't, I don't remember how, what was the modifier for global CSS. It's not this, it's uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, I, I'll check it later. Okay, so this is how you write components. How you write, uh, this is how you actually specify the properties of the component. You just export some variables. I can have internal variables too, like I can have here, uh, let's uh, the equals, name, and then maybe I can use dir here. Oop, dir. And this will work the same, right? It's not changing. And yeah, again, the, the, the JavaScript is isolated in this component. It will not affect any other variable. So I can have millions of components, each having their name property or main uh, variable. I don't have to care about that. Um, okay, cool. Questions up till now? I'm gonna uh, answer the global thing later. <laughs> In the brackets. No, I don't think it's like that. I have to check the documentation. Uh, meanwhile, think about questions or I'm gonna go on the next. This field style. How do components communicate with each other? Okay, that's, we're not there yet. Um, let me actually, I should have known this global thing. Uh, global, 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 global style. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna find it later. Um, we can also do, Okay, let's, let me go back to the question. One of the ways how you, how co they communicate is that you actually specify a property, define a property for the, for the component and then you just give it, uh, you assign that property. But this is like one way and it's not very interesting actually. Um, but I'm gonna actually show you something more interesting later. Next slide is reactivity. Okay, a uh, framework without reactivity is very dumb. Doesn't do much. So actually let's, uh, because we already have some reactivity and that this count thing, let's actually see how that how that's implemented. Uh, counter is a component, that's this one. And if we open the file, and we can actually see here, counter is imported from this file. 
immediately we know where this counter is. Uh, counter here, okay. What do we have? We have some count variable that's in initialized to zero on, in the beginning, and then we have some function that's called increment. This is a function, right? Uh, don't let the uh, this stupid short 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 can syntax fool you. I'm gonna actually do a proper function. I hate these array functions. I'm not wrong. <laughs> okay. So what does this component counter do? It, it actually defines a, a button. And this is a normal HTML button, right? And when on the on click, uh, okay, this is now a Svelte shortcut, actually. We uh, assign a call, uh, an event handler for the click uh, event. And actually, if I go with the with the mouse, it, help, it gives me some help, which is quite nice. Yep. <laughs> no, I'm already I'm already in that in that mindset. <laughs> Too late. Uh, okay, so I defined the uh, handler for the. For the on, for the on click event, and this is a bit uh, this is just really some very simple syntax sugar in Svelte. It's not uh, there's not not mu mu much magic here. It's uh, just a syntax, syntax sugar for this add event listener click the function. Uh, this is how we reference the function. The uh, this um, how do you call them big curly brackets. These are actually escape in this JavaScript world, right? So when we use the, on a variable, we actually refer to the variable. When we use it, use it here, we refer to the function. So we say when you click the button, call the function, the function increments the count, and count is blah, blah. So as you can see, as you can see their activity is there without actually much, uh, what? Why? Yeah. yeah. Um, now, maybe we have some, uh, let's say we have something that's, we increment the count, but maybe we have something that's uh, count uh, doubled, which should be count twice. And I'm missing uh, let, okay, because I'm dumped. And what happens now? What do you think? Uh, reactivity broken. <laughs> okay, so there's a trick here, and it's a bit dirty trick in Svelte. When you want to enforce some reactivity, when you say, okay, when count change changes, you need to run this line again. And there's the, this trick with the, this, this is actually valid JavaScript code, but this, uh, it's a label. And they're saying if you use the, the dollar label, uh, I'm gonna compile this code in something that actually reactively, uh, traces the changes of count and all, uh, runs the code and actually count, uh, doubled is now again, uh, reactive variable. So let's go back and now you can see it works. Woohoo! So far my demo works. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see the time. Oops. Not that but not long. How are we on time? Ooh, 30 minutes. Okay, I actually wanted to implement one more thing. But maybe I'm gonna skip it. I'm gonna just tell you how it's done. <laughs> um, so, okay, as I said, reactivity like this is a bit like it's pretty raw. Like for counter, it's work, it works, right? But if you have some complex structures and you want to, 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 for example, I don't know, 12 components on the web page need to, to know this, uh, value of count, then it's kind of pain to kind of pull and push this variable 
uh, up the component tree and down the component tree, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, what Svelte has is the next best thing in Svelte, and that's called stores. And what are stores? Um, yeah, actually, I do have. Okay, I, I'm going to actually, <laughs> I'm going to actually implement a simple store. Uh, no, I'm going to copy paste it online. Um, yeah, let's go into this lib thing and maybe new file and I'm gonna call the file timer.ts. It's TypeScript, yeah. And I'm going to paste my, my already finished code. Sorry, guys. Uh, okay, everybody here knows what new date does in JavaScript, right? And everybody knows what set interval does, right? I'm not going to need to explain this. Um, so basically, if I put some console log here on the console, I'm going to get the, the current time, date time, uh, each one second. How do we export this as a Svelte? How, how do we use this information? How do we use this variable that all the changes all the time? Well, we are using, we're going to use the, something that's called, uh, component. Uh, sorry, store, and there are two types of stores, readable and writable. I'm not going to bother you what it, what, it, what it is. And this is how you create the, a readable store. You give it an initial value, and you're giving it a, a function that will run, that will actually first run when something subscribes to the store, the first time we use this store. And then this start uh, function will give us this set uh, function. It's another function, inner function. And what I'm doing here in the interval, basically I'm calling this set thing with the new date each one second. So this is kind of running somewhere in the background in the browser, blah, blah, blah. Each second, it will, it's going to call this setting. Actually, I can, re I mean, don't be fooled by this set uh, uh, name. You can say anything like uh, anything, right? Uh, it's, it, it doesn't really matter, but like kind of set, says, okay, set the value of the store. How do we use this? Well, let's go back to here, and I'm going to say, okay, Okay, um, let me try, let me try, oops, is it going to find it? Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, I just import this thing here because it expo it's exported. I'm going to just import it and I'm going to just actually use it with the dollar sign. And let's go back. Uh, yep, works. It's pretty ugly. I don't know why, why I made it here. I should have put it. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's get back to deep. <laughs> and P. Oops. I am an expert in HTML. Does it, does this look like something? Yeah, it looks like something. Is, is. Okay. Yeah, everything works. So, what's the trick here? Well, once you had, once you have this store thing, uh, or for, for somebody that used, have used, um, Angular, that would be like, uh, RxJS subscribable, observable, but what's the, what's his name? So actually, um, Svelte is compatible with RxJS. So I can even, here, I can even use, uh, where is my file? Oops, no, not that file. Yeah. Instead of using the store, I can actually do stuff with uh, RxJS. But the Svelte stores are a bit uh, simpler to use and uh, native to Svelte, and they are quite uh, smaller in code size. So unless you need all the operators in RxJS, you don't need to use RxJS. Uh, okay. 
once I, this is just a variable, right? It's just some constant. It's not a function. But it's of type readable. And actually it knows uh, the type of what, what the readable generates, what the store generates. Uh, and how do I use a store? I use a store just by prefixing the variable with a dollar sign. And now I can actually take this and uh, I can put it probably here. Oops, not like that. <laughs> what I'm doing? I wanted to probably take this and put it here. Uh, yeah. This technology is amazing. How does it know? And now I have the store used in two places. It's the same store. And it's the same interval. And it's the same uh, value. But I'm getting it in both, uh, in both components from, like, I import it from one place, but I get it, I use it in two places. And this just works. And it's super simple. Uh, no one, I'm not going to bother you too much with the rest of stuff, but uh, I, actually, I can return an object that kind of is like a readable, and that object just needs to have, uh, for example, time here could have been uh, time other, could have been something that has a subscribe. Subscribe, yeah. And how do you write this? You write it like this. It has a subscribe method, and it will work as a store. And then actually I can have some, but do something else, like do something else. It's another function, and this other function maybe changes something internally in the store, and then that's, uh, and then it, it calls the internal set function, right? Set something, blah, blah, blah. And it will change the value of the store. And everybody that that uses the store with the dollar time other will get the new will get the new uh, will get the new value. And actually, when I when I was writing this uh, irits log <laughs> uh, application, back to it because it's so nice. By the way, I, I accept PRs. Uh, it, it has a lot of un, unimplemented features. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, what, what I actually wrote was uh, one of the common questions actually about Svelte is does it have a router? And no, it doesn't have a router. It's super trivial to implement a router. And let me show you my implementation. Okay, it's 30 lines of code, which is mostly some stupid games with this uh, stripping the, the prefix. Basically what it happens is you, I take the window, I uh, subscribe to the hash change uh, event, and then I call the callback. And what's, what does the callback do, does is, is a it's a function, I remove the prefix and I call this store.set.value. Basically, when you, and you can use this router in a million places. It's the same router. It's the same, it's the same uh, window add event, add event listener. But, uh, wherever I use this router, actually, let me, let me quickly see how it's used. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I don't have that part here. Sorry. I have it somewhere, somewhere on GIST. Basically, how you use it is you just, um, take this variable and you put it like, uh, hash, hash router. The same way as the, and you, then you get the, the, the value. And then you can do something like if hash router is something, do this. If hash router is uh, something else, like show the counter. Actually, let me show you that. I, that was a question that you should have all asked me. <laughs> uh, how do you do like, uh, oh shit, uh, where is this router? 
it's not valid. Yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, what? Mm -hmm. no, yes, I'm, it's not just that. It's uh, this is not TypeScript. I think I don't have the types. Uh, shouldn't say, save it as TS. Okay, so how do you? Yeah, let's do something. If if count is ten, if uh, count equals ten. Uh, and this is how you close the if, and then maybe I'm gonna say here count is 10. Captain Obvious. <sighs> it doesn't work because count is. Where? Did I put it in the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't want. Here, but I don't have. Oh, okay, I should have had, had a diff here. They should implement a DOF. And oops, where is my? Ah, no. Yeah, here to type it again like some animal. And again, this is very simple, right? I mean, I, I like uh, I like how simple Svelte is. Uh, no, it's if. And oops, yeah. Oh, okay, cool, works. Um, okay, then there, there's if there's uh, if you want to loop or something, there's four. There's uh, there is uh, a, a, a sync, but it's not like this. And uh, okay, so there are some like di this. I would call them directives. I don't know, I don't know how they're called in in Salt. Let me check it out. Uh, how they call them, blah, 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 I don't know. Now, when people see this thing, uh, they say, okay, what's with the templating? This, this uh, reminds a bit like, I don't know, like uh, this uh, handlebars and stuff like that. Yeah, so, but this is actually not uh, like a string templating. For example, in mustache or handlebars, you can actually do something stupid like this. Uh, but actually, no, these uh, ifs and like the elements that Svelte uh, sees here must be compilable to actual uh, HTML. So this all needs to be, this is like just a small extension to the HTML language to have like uh, conditionals, loops, and uh, waiting for async stuff. So that's and also this this thing here. So it's just a small extension to the language, uh, to HTML. But you can't do something that's invalid, like in the HTML language. So for example, if I do this, it's gonna tell me you're closing an element that's not even open because it knows that this block here uh, you didn't open the. Didn't open diff here. If I do this, then it's going to be okay. But then it's going to re, uh, remind me that okay, this diff here it's not closed. And why is this important? It's important because actually internally, and actually maybe I'm coming to the to the end of my presentation. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because under the hood, what Svelte does is actually takes this structure that we wrote, these files, and actually compiles it to JavaScript. We are not getting any strings. We are not getting any HTML. It compiles to this JavaScript uh, code that says create element. And then on that element, uh, for example, what was the element here? It was the button, right? So this button, no, the button, where is the button? This button is going to be create element button. And then add, add event listener click and then call this uh, function and the function is there somewhere. 
with some stupid name. Uh, and it's and actually it adds a little bit of code that says when count changes, change uh, change this inner part of the button. So it's gonna change inner text of the button, right? No, it's uh, no, it's a child. It's, this is a child. Actually, it is inner inner text. Um, and it it will uh, wire everything up so that this reactivity works. Now, what's the benefit of this approach? The benefit is it's actually quite fast. It's uh, super fast. Why? Because it does not have a virtual DOM. So in React or in Angular, what they do is like all the all the JavaScript, all the code creates this virtual DOM, and then there's this other thing that's called uh, the re something. The I don't know what's the name is. The re no, I don't. Know. That actually checks the virtual DOM and uh, sees okay, are, is this the state of the real DOM, and then kind of do, does these little changes in the in the real DOM. Uh, Svelte actually wires all, 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 all the code together in, the, in a way that it all, always changes uh, the real DOM. Excuse me, can yeah. you implement, for example, Bootstrap or other element of or something with Svelte? Bootstrap what? It, the, the CSS framework? Yeah. yeah. Mm. For man manipulation with the object or something like that. I probably, yeah. I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do that. Bootstrap actually. Yeah. 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 I haven't, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know how Bootstrap looks like actually. Um, I mean, I would have to check it. So, for example, if it's JavaScript, then it's easier to work, right? Because you can. For example, I can say here, I'm, I'm dragging this out. Um, One thing that I can do here is, for example, I can say, and this is a bit uh, um, advanced. Uh, and let button. So I can do this. And now I'm getting the reference to the component, to the button element in the JavaScript code. And well, it's not typed, okay, never mind. And now if I have any JavaScript function that can add styling to the to the button, I can just do it here, like uh, do stuff, button, right? Button. And that's it. So if Bootstrap gives me that, thing, that function, it, it will work. I, I don't know Bootstrap, sorry, sorry, I'm just, like, uh, like I, I'm, I'm, I just write front end up until up until it's like uh, three hundred lines, and that's it. Like I, I, I don't, I don't have any more <laughs> patience <laughs> to write more front end code. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's maybe continue with some questions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't like benchmarks. But they, they claim it's pretty fast. <laughs> Uh, oh, here is here is your question uh, answer. <laughs> uh, so look, I my my point of view that uh, React and Angular are awful. <laughs> I 
I mean, there's so much boilerplate, and, and these days, Angular tried what? Like, they have three approaches to reactivity? And you never know what to use it, and what, what's this thing like they, they render your component twice? I mean, if I come and see React code, I'm like, and I actually I've worked in a company that, uh, at a company that worked a lot with React, and we had everything in React, and if you ask me to see React code, I'm gonna, hmm, I don't know if this is correct React or not, not correct React. Like, this is so simple, and I don't know, it's like HTML. Uh, for me, and I'm not in the business of front-end, so I can't advise you what a company will, would need to do. I am in the business of educating people. I, actually, that's my hobby. <laughs> that's what we're doing at uh, this place and at the hacker space in Skopje and uh, a little bit at my work. Uh, I think this is the proper way how to teach the new gener generation to write stuff. I don't want to teach them React, and I don't want to teach them uh, Angular. If they need uh, a salary, okay, they're, they're going to teach them themselves. But if I need to teach somebody that's, uh, that's going to write front end for themselves, like I, di I did, I did it just for my needs, I'm going to teach you to, to use uh, Svelte. That, that's, that's the point why I'm like, I like it. Actually, it's pretty popular. These days, it's getting very popular. But. Vue is pretty good. I'll, I, I think Vue is pretty much better than React and, and, and Angular. These days, especially, especially with the 3, 3 point or 3 point something version. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, for some legacy software, we are for the software. Yeah, maybe it's just, uh, where is I? I broke my computer. Oh, okay. Uh, Yeah, just about the, shortly about the tooling. When you do this scaffold, it's gonna suggest this uh, VS Code extension. It works. This is what I use. Uh, you can see here it knows that it's Svelte stuff. Uh, it uses with with the scaffold. Uh, I prefer it because it's quite fast. It's really simple to to configure. Like I would. I mean, you can use anything with Svelte, but why? <laughs> uh, and uh, with the scaffold comes this Svelte check thing. Which is, uh, if you're not using an editor or you save, or you save the invalid code. Okay. I, I actually do have a lot of errors. It's going to actually check all the code that it's nice. So this is what you have on a CA system and stuff like that, right? Uh, that's about the tooling TypeScript. Yeah. It works with TypeScript. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's funny that they moved. The implementation of the compiler, they moved it from TypeScript to JavaScript with JS docs. Uh, but that's another story. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a compiler. It's interesting that it's compiled. It does not have a runtime. You can actually put Svelte component inside of React application. It's going to just sit somewhere there. Um, oh yeah. Svelte kit is Next.js for Svelte. It's pretty opinionated. It has this like file routing like PHP. PHP, I guess, was on some good, uh, <laughs> in a, had some good direction back in the 90s. So, you know, like routing is with uh, separate files, blah, blah, blah. It has server, server stuff. It has client stuff and it kind of fits everything together. I don't have a need for, for Next.js, uh, for, yeah, for Next.js especially, but. <laughs> But for Svelte Kit, because I want my front end to run like static files on GitHub uh, pages. I don't want to host. I'm a DevOps, so I don't want to host any server code. Um, here are some references. The, the introduction and the, the official documentation is pretty good. Also, you can, you can go there to see the playground. What? <laughs> no. Um, okay. 
Uh, AMD and also has a Svelte tutorial, it's pretty good. And that's it, the questions.